This is BBC News. I'm Clive Myrie. The headlines at nine. A deal on press regulation by the Conservatives, Labour and the Liberal Democrats. David Cameron says it guarantees a free press. It supports our great traditions of investigative journalism and free speech. It protects the rights of the vulnerable and the innocent. Victims of press intrusion told the Leveson Inquiry it was time to get tough with the press. So, will the watchdog work? If that is what is eventually put in place, then I think um, Lord Justice Leveson's inquiry will have been well worthwhile. We'll have the very latest on press regulation from Westminster. The other main story is here on the BBC News at 9. Anger in Cyprus over plans for a tax on savings. Banks are shut until Thursday amid fears over deposits. Ten years on from the fall of Saddam Hussein, we have a special report from Ben Brown in Baghdad on how Iraq is faring. Be very good with animals. <laughs> and Frank Thornton, who starred as Captain Peacock in Are You Being Served, dies at the age of 92. A very good evening to you and welcome to the BBC News at 9. Now, he'd called for political consensus in the setting up of an independent watchdog to police the press. And it seems Lord Justice Leveson has got it. The three main party leaders have all day been scrambling to take the credit for hammering out a deal to protect us all from the worst excesses of the press, but at the same time maintaining press freedom. Now, the campaign group Hacked Off is a little less hacked off tonight, welcoming the cross-party compromise. But the press, well, they're still studying the fine detail. Here's Nick Robinson. And if you want to find out more on what the plan changes will mean for press regulation, head to the BBC website. That's at bbc.co.uk slash news. Moving on now, Cypriots are settling down to at least four days of bank holidays this week. They're not saints' days or being held to mark religious festivals. No, the banks will be shut to stop people taking all their money out. European finance ministers tonight have softened the blow a little for savers, afraid of losing up to 10% of their bank deposits in a bailout deal. In the last few minutes, it's been confirmed that those with less than €100,000 will be protected. That's if Cypriot MPs vote tomorrow to approve the package. Our Europe editor... Grant, Grant Hewitt has the details. Douglas, it's good to see you. Douglas Redeker from the Peterson Institute for International Economics. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Now, it is exactly 18 minutes past nine. The headlines here on BBC News. Politicians from all the main parties claim the credit for a deal on a new system of regulating the press. As we've been hearing in Cyprus, people with savings in Cypriot banks must wait until tomorrow to see if they'll lose up to a tenth of their funds. And Mairead Philpott takes the stand and denies starting the fire that killed her six children. In a moment, a new award to change the profile of engineering in Britain and beyond. And in sport, Rio Ferdinand has pulled out of the England squad for their World Cup qualifiers against San Marino and Montenegro. But he insists he still wants to play for his country again. Wigan's chairman Dave Whelan has dismissed claims that a tackle by Callum McManaman, which left a Newcastle player with suspected knee ligament damage, was reckless. Whelan said he got the ball as clear as a whistle. And Ireland's Brian O'Driscoll has been cited for his stamp on Simone Favaro during the first half of Ireland's Six Nations defeat by Italy. O'Driscoll was sent to the sin bin for only the second time in his 14-year career for that stamp. I'll have details on those stories coming up in around 20 minutes for you, Clive. Now, a woman accused of killing her six children in a house fire has told a jury she would never have put them at risk. Mairead Philpott is on trial for manslaughter alongside her husband Mick and a third defendant. All three denied the charges. Our correspondent Jeremy Cook has the details. Jeremy Cook reporting for us there. It's 21 minutes past nine. Now, let's take a look at some of the other stories making the news this evening. And a man who worked for the artist David Hockney has died after being taken to hospital from the painter's house in East Yorkshire. Dominic Elliott, who was 23, died in the early hours of the morning. Police say there were no signs of violence. A post-mortem examination will take place tomorrow. 
Two teaching unions have announced that their members are to walk out in a series of strikes planned for the summer term over issues including pay, pensions and workload. Now news of a shot in the arm for Britain's aerospace industry. It's to receive a £2 billion investment, securing the future of 115,000 jobs across the country. The money, a billion from the government and a billion from industry, will fund a new Aerospace Technology Institute, which will aim to develop the next generation of quieter, more energy efficient aircraft. Now, they were on a popular walking trail in the Alps when they lost their lives. The bodies of Peter Saunders, who was 48, and his son Charlie, who was 12, were found by rescue services in the French resort of Chamonix. Police said they'd been exploring a dangerous, deep and snowy trail when they fell. Sangeeta Maiska has the details. Now, the war may be over, but ten years on from the start of the conflict in Iraq, thousands of British servicemen and women are still coming to terms with its impact on their lives. Now, 100,000 military personnel served in the conflict. Of those, 179 were killed, with 426 wounded in action. Many now carry psychological as well as physical scars. And as our defence correspondent Caroline Wyatt reports, some have been changed forever. This is BBC News. Coming up in the next few minutes... As BBC News moves into its new central London studios, we'll show you around our new home. And in sport, Rio Ferdinand withdraws from the England squad for their World Cup qualifiers. But it's time for a look at all the weather news now with Jay Wynn. Hello, welcome back to the BBC News at 9. I'm Clive Myrie. The headlines. And Debbie Cameron says the new press regulator will be tough and independent, yet guarantee a free press. It's a result of a cross-party deal, including a royal charter that can't be changed without Parliament's agreement. This system will ensure upfront apologies, million-pound fines, a self-regulatory body with independence of appointments and funding. Eurogroup finance ministers say savers in Cyprus with less than €100,000 should be protected from a new bailout tax. The plan to impose a levy of up to 10% has provoked widespread public anger. A woman accused of killing her six children in a house fire has told the jury she would never have put them at risk. Mairead Philpot, her husband Mick and a third defendant deny manslaughter. Tributes are being paid to a British father and his son who died in a walking accident in the Alps. The bodies of Peter Saunders and 12-year-old Charlie were found in the French resort of Chamonix. And coming up after the sport, we'll hear what a former tabloid editor has to say about how politicians want to regulate the press. Sport now for a full roundup from the BBC Sports Centre. Here's Carthy. Hi there. Hi Clive, thank you very much. Good evening to you. But that is all the sport for now. You can keep up to date with all the stories on the BBC Sport website. That's bbc.co.uk slash sport on the BBC Sport app. And I'll have more in the next hour for you, Clive. Carthy, many thanks. Now let's return to that cross-party deal to create a new press regulator. By Royal Charter, David Cameron told MPs the body would be tough and independent and guarantee a free press. And he promised that newspapers abusing their power could be fined up to a million pounds. Labour says that safeguards will ensure the regulator can't be weakened by politicians. And the Lib Dem leader, Nick Clegg, hopes newspaper groups will back the deal. That's not at all certain. A number of papers have issued a joint warning that there are still deeply contentious issues. Well, with me now is the former Sunday Mirror editor, Paul Conyu. Paul, it's good to see you. Thanks very much indeed for coming in. Um, do we still have a free press tonight, free to speak truth to power and a press that can hold us all to account, do you think? At the moment, yes, because I think today was billed as D-Day. It's, I think, another messy chapter in, uh, in a battle or a war, perhaps it's not over yet. It's just after quarter to ten. The headlines here on BBC News and David Cameron says the new regula press regulator will be tough and independent, yet guarantee a free press. Savers in Cyprus with less than €100,000 are being told they'll be protected from a new bailout tax if the deal passes a parliamentary vote. Mairead Philpot takes the stand and denies starting the fire that killed her six children. 
and on the financial markets. Here's how shares in Europe and the US ended the trading day. A lot of red there. Um, everything down, the FTSE, DAX, Dow and NASDAQ um, as a result of fears over the situation in Cyprus. Um, all this after a number of days of the markets rallying, reaching uh, highs of over the last five years. But uh, all those gains evaporating following that situation in Cyprus. Those are the markets. Now, coming up, as BBC News moves into its new central London studios, we'll show you around our new home. He brought laughter to millions. There's Captain Peacock in Are You Being Served? and spent almost his whole adult life starring on stage and screen. The actor Frank Thornton has died peacefully in his sleep at the age of 92. Lisa Mzimba looks back at his life. Now, BBC News has moved into a new home at Broadcasting House in central London after more than 40 years of news coming from West London and Television Centre. We've made a little bit of television history today with the first BBC One News Bulletin broadcast from what's now the biggest and most high-tech newsroom in Europe. Nick Hyam reports. In the Commons, Mr McLeod has said that the London busman's pay claim... BBC News, 1950s style. No auto cue, hand-drawn maps and graphics, a black and white business that relied on laboriously processed news film. Then, around 1980, the switch from film to video, a revolution. And the fighting after it was, if anything, fiercer than it was before. Everything changed in the early 80s with the arrival of the handheld electronic camera. And the marvellous thing about that was, you didn't know how to process it, you could edit it in the field. So people like myself, we had this wonderful sense of freedom. We could be thousands of miles from this sort of editorial hub that you see here, and we had to be trusted. There was a second revolution too. Originally, news film shot abroad had to be packed up and sent unprocessed by plane, arriving a day or more late. Satellites changed all that. But today, even satellite trucks like this could be replaced by the internet, broadband, and smartphones. We've got sandbags against the doors. This live interview last year was broadcast using just an iPhone. Now the studios too are at the cutting edge, largely automated and computer driven. For the first time we are broadcasting in true high definition and we've got shiny new studios that are bright, they are airy. For the first time in a long time, we've gone back to having a real newsroom backdrop. That newsroom is Europe's largest. Impressive, certainly. It reminds me of a sort of battery hen factory with electronic add-ons, but I'm sure it's going to produce some wonderful news. What matters is the people, really, but not the machinery. Nick Hyam reporting there. Well, it's nearly time for the BBC News at 10 with Hugh Edwards. But just a reminder that at 10.30, we'll be telling you which stories are making the front pages of tomorrow's papers. And a few of them are already in. The Express leads with a health story. A new report that promises a longer life if you make lifestyle changes. And uh, a story there about the snow today. And The Telegraph leads with a pre-budget announcement. It says more than 2 million families will be able to claim up to £1,200 to subsidise Childcare. Well, we'll be discussing the stories behind all the headlines with the broadcaster and journalist Daisy McAndrew and Kieran Stacey from the Financial Times. So join me for the papers at 10.30 here on BBC News. Now, though, it's time for all the weather news with Jay Wynn.